All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to talk about cluster sets as a high intensity technique, and are they good for you? The last time we talked about drop sets, and uh, we got real positive feedback on that, and many of you ask about cluster sets. So the first thing I want to talk about is what exactly do we define as a cluster set? Some people say, well, is that a rest pause rep? Is that a muscle round? Um, like kind of what is it really? So there's uh, a couple different ways of looking at it. You have kind of this inter-set philosophy where you do a certain number of reps and then you continuously and then you rest for a specific period of time and then you go back and you do it again and you repeat X amount of times. There's also an intra-set uh, methodology where you actually rest between reps. Now, me personally, I would call that rest pause. So let's say you're using and say you're using a chest machine. You do one rep, you stop. You do one rep, you stop. That would be kind of more of an intra set. What I'm specifically talking about today is the first technique, the inter set. So this is where you perform five, six, seven, eight reps, and then you rest. And what I like to do is 20 seconds, and then you go again and then you rest 20 seconds and you go one third and final time. So it's essentially three mini sets. So that's what I call cluster sets. It's really not a big deal what you call them. Um, my buddy Scott Stevenson does muscle rounds. He's got a great technique he uses. Uh, these, are, these are nothing new. Th these techniques have been around for ages. I think we kind of forget about them sometimes, uh, especially in the bodybuilding world. Now, in the athletic world, it's very different, okay? And actually, when you go to look at the scientific literature on cluster sets, you will find a ton of literature. There's a ton of stuff out there. Now, <clears throat> as always, you have to examine what they're actually doing though. And if you look at all the different studies, and there is a ton of them, what you'll notice is it's geared more toward power and strength. So that looks a little bit different. Let me talk about each one of those specifically. So power, fantastic for athletes. I use this for my athletes. Power means you're going to use a little bit less weight, maybe 40 to 65% of your one rep max. Okay, you're going to do clean, explosive reps. You're not going to fatigue. You're going to get great practice. This is, a, it's actually good for, for neurologically. You get great practice. You're doing reps with perfect form. You're explosive. And as an athlete, you want to be very explosive. So you might do, three, four, five reps, and you might rest, say 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You might do it again, but your reps are all really clean and your form doesn't break down. So you're, you're training that power component more than actually exhausting the muscle fibers. And actually when you start exhausting the fibers and getting, and get tired, you start to, uh, I would say you're kind of defeating the purpose of why you're actually doing it as an athlete. And then you kind of have this strength version. So this might be somebody that's interested in maximal strength and they might take a weight, say they can do it for four reps. They might do only two. Then they might rest and do two more. Then they might rest and do two more. Then they might rest and do two more. So they may finish with eight reps with a heavy weight that they can only do for four reps normally. So they're getting more hard reps, which is great for strength athletes. It's fantastic. Um, and actually when I was at Louie's, we had a nice blend at Louie's, Westside Barbell. We had a nice blend of this. Uh, like on our bench days, we'd use a lower percentage and we would train very explosively. We would move fast person to person. And then we would use some assistance exercises where we worked up to heavy weights. And we would do, I remember the pen presses, we would do a heavy, a heavy rep, rest for a second, go back to a heavy rep. Um, and that's really what the scientific literature talks about uh, for the most part. It's, it's about these athletes. But what I want to talk to you about today is hypertrophy. Now, I really don't see a lot of conclusive studies on hypertrophy. Um, it may be out there. I'm not combing the books like my buddy Jeff Nippert or somebody like that. But for hypertrophy, I think it makes a lot of sense. And just like I said when I talked about drop sets, you kind of go back to the basics. What really makes a muscle grow? So you have activation, you have loading, and you have exhausting muscle fibers. You activate, load, and exhaust muscle fibers. That's really what builds muscle when you break it down to its most simple form. So what does activation mean? Well, it means mind-muscle connection. That's super important, particularly with hypertrophy. 
but it also means this HTMU, these high threshold motor units. So real simply put, when you're using um, a, a weight that your body thinks is really heavy, let's say it's up around 80 or 90% of your one rep max, your body, your muscles have to produce a lot of force. So you have these low threshold motor units. Those are just kind of like a few muscle fibers. They're doing just enough to lift some light weight. But as the weight gets heavier, you have these larger motor units that control a lot of muscle fibers so you can produce a lot of force. And that's what you want to do. You want to, ex you want to activate everything that you can activate. And training, uh, you know, at this 80, 90% range near your one rep max will help you get that activation. And what we're doing in a cluster set is we're going to get that because we're training uh, with what our body thinks is really heavy. And I'll explain what that set looks like in a minute. Time under tension. I'm actually not a big time under tension guy. Well, I am. I just, I interpret it differently than most people. A lot of people think time under tension is just, okay, start the set. Now start the clock. And when you're done, that's your time under tension. I don't buy that for one second. If you're doing 30 reps, you're doing something really light and you start and then you do your 30 reps, you set the weight down. How many of those reps were your, was your muscles really under significant tension? Maybe they're under tension, but significant tension. So for me, the time under tension that gives you the bang for your buck is near the end of the set. So how many reps are you doing in a, like, that you really got to work for? And that's where cluster sets really shine because you're going to do a lot of reps that you really have to work through them. So it is good for time under tension and kind of that zone that I like. Overload. Again, let's say you're doing an exercise. And let's say you can normally do eight reps with it. Let's say with a cluster set protocol, you, let's say you do six, four, and three. That's 13 reps. So that's a way of achieving overload. You're taking a weight you'd normally do for eight, and you're actually doing 13 reps with it. That's more work for your body, okay? Metabolites, pump. Um, the cool thing is, is you've got short rest breaks. The time under tension is high. You're driving a lot of blood in there. So there's also an, an advantage. A lot People, I think, call it metabolic training. Some people call it cellular swelling. All kinds of terms. Metabolites, all this stuff. But there are some other mechanisms that are happening at the sarcomere level that are pretty, pretty cool, too, that can help you grow. Density, training density. So instead of doing a set, resting three minutes, doing a set, resting three minutes, doing a set, you're kind of combining it all down into a, a shorter period of time. That's what we call training density. That's a method of overload in the self, and we're achieving that as well. All right, so this is called a mega minx? Yes. A mega minx. I have no clue what that is, but I've got this mixed up already. There's no, this looks incredibly challenging. So, what is this? A dodecahedron? Dodecahedron, yes. Dodecahedron. So, let's see if he can solve this. All right. Boom. 10 minutes, 6 seconds. Uh, that was impressive. It was, that was impressive. Is this the first time you've ever solved this, this one for time? Yeah. That uh, was very no. impressive. Good job. And then fatigue. As I mentioned, you want to activate muscle fibers. You want to load them with a good load. And then you want to fatigue them. Again, I've said this before. If it was just about activation and loading and just moving big weights, then the guys that are, a lot of the guys at the top of the powerlifting world, like in the 180, when 181s and some of these lower classes, these guys are lifting phenomenal weight, more than us bodybuilders, but they're not real big because they've mastered, they've mastered activation and loading, but they don't really drill into the fiber and exhaust it. And I think the, the fatigue part is where you can really create a lot of hypertrophy. 
all right? So now let's talk about what a set would look like because I have some rules on this that I like to follow. What I generally like to do is I like to take a weight that I can do for about eight reps. So I use a weight that um, <clears throat> is my eight rep max. And what I do is I back off two reps on the first mini cluster. So I'll do six reps. I know I got, I know I could probably do eight, but I'll do six. And then I'll rest for 20 seconds. The next one I do, I leave generally one rep in the tank. So let's say I can get five, I might stop at four. Like when I think, okay, maybe I can do another rep, I'll stop. I rest 20 seconds. Then on the third mini uh, cluster or mini set within the cluster, I'll go to failure. Okay, so let's say the eight rep max. Normally I would do eight reps with it, but I'm gonna do a six, maybe a, a four or five, then maybe a three or four. Now, sometimes I change it. Sometimes I'll do a 10 rep max, which would be like eight reps and then six reps and maybe five reps. Sometimes I'll even do like 12 reps, a 12 rep max. So I'm gonna do 10 reps and then maybe seven reps. The higher up you go in reps, the more brutal this becomes. It becomes very, very challenging. Okay, now that's what it looks like. So do you do this on every exercise or are there specific exercises? I believe that you should use more movements that are, I'm gonna call them safe. So if you think about like a squat or a bench press, I'm not a big fan of cluster work for that. Like I wouldn't want you to take a squat and do it to where you're two reps shy of failure. But when you get to that third cluster, you could hurt yourself, all right? Now, if you're an athlete, and you're doing, working in these other ranges, specifically the power ranges, then it's actually the opposite. I love squats, I love bench presses, I love deadlifts in this 40 to 65% range because now you're controlling the weight, you're executing the perfect form. But we're talking about bodybuilding here, so don't confuse the two. So with bodybuilding, instead of say a squat, I'd rather have you doing something like a leg press or a hack squat, something that's very safe. Um, so you can really tax the muscle without injuring yourself, okay? so. You gotta look at the exercise. Now, when would you put it in a routine? What I like to do is I like to create all the kind of the progressive overload basic stuff early in the routine. So my first and particularly my second exercise, the first exercise I do is usually to kind of establish mind-muscle connection. The second exercise is, is more of loading the fibers with straight sets. Cause we know that straight sets are very, very productive for strength gains. So. If you can get stronger, you're going to potentially load load the muscle fibers more and they're potentially going to get bigger if you do steps three and four, uh, which is... So normally what I would do is I, after I got all my loading workout, um, for example, I trained chest today. I did some dumbbell presses, then I did some barbell incline presses, then I went to a chest machine. It was a prime machine, but I, that's where I did the cluster set, so I did it third. So that's where I would put it in the workout. If you put it first, you're going to be so fatigued your performance might suffer the rest of the workout. Um, so that's where I would put it. Now, how many of these sets do you do? Well, this is where you gotta be really careful because like I said, if you're doing something for eight reps uh, and now all of a sudden you've figured out a way to do 13 reps with it, think about all the extra tension you're putting on the muscle. It's very demanding. You know, if you do a set of eight, the first four or five reps, might not be too bad. And then the third, the sixth, seventh, and eighth rep might be tough. But when you're doing a cluster set, that second and third cluster, every rep is tough. So you, you induce a lot of muscle damage. So you've gotta be careful because if you do too much of this, you won't be able to recover, okay? So what I typically do is one cluster set on an exercise, and it's usually the third exercise. I might do it on the fourth, but that would be the maximum. So what does this look like in a real workout? one to two of these cluster sets. That's it. That's all you need. You don't need three cluster sets or four, six sets. You don't need that. One or two. Certainly no more than one on an exercise. That's often you should do it. So who, who would this apply to? Who could best use this? I would say as a beginner, you're going to want to stick with straight sets. There's no need for clusters, although they are very fun. They're, they're, <laughs> they're very fun. I would leave the cluster sets to the intermediate and the advanced guys. So, you know, once you've been training a couple years, 
uh, once you've got your strength base developed, you, you get a, you're starting to get a good mind muscle connection. I mean, think about a cluster set for somebody that doesn't even have a mind muscle connection yet. Um, it's not going to be real productive. Okay, so I think as you advance, these become more valuable. And then as you advance to the highest levels, then I think that's where something like this is very good for exhausting muscle fibers. Because when you get real advanced to that level, you're not going to continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger or, or gain rep, you know, or gain a lot of reps. You have to kind of think outside the box a little bit. Um, so now what about the natural folks versus the people who are not natural? Well, the guys that are natural don't have the recovery ability. So you're just going to have to be careful. So instead of doing maybe the two, two of these clusters, I'd probably only do one. But gauge how you feel. Even the one cluster set might um, make you extremely sore. Um, maybe not. But um, you just got to be more aware of recovery because you want to be able to recover. Now, so should a natural do it at all? Absolutely because it's intensity, it's working the muscle fibers, and naturals don't have the advantage of the people who are not natural. So it's even more important that they do quality reps. So a lot of people say, John, I don't think naturals should do any of these high intensity techniques. I 100% disagree. This is a very safe, effective way of really taxing the muscle fiber. You just need to do enough that's, that creates exhaustion and fatigue, stimulates the muscle without needing seven days to recover because you're so sore. So there's a balancing act there, but if you're natural and you're watching this video, I absolutely think you should incorporate one of these in your workout. And they're very fun. And the better you get at them, the more you'll like them. So anyways, that's um, kind of cluster sets, uh, my short version of it. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, give them a shot and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, again, uh, like the other methods, like the muscle rounds my buddy Scott does is a, kind of another version that's real effective. Then when you're doing the intrust set version, just one rep and doing another rep, that's kind of another version that's very effective too. Those two things are a little, they're very effective methods that are a little different. I wanted to specifically talk about this method today. So it's not the only way to do them. It's just, just my way to do them. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.